welcome to another Mission Shakeup. I'm your host, Rebecca Lindhout, consultant for adults and children at WMU of North Carolina. And I am happy to be with you again after our last, last posting was in December. And I hope that um, you had enough resources to last you uh, for, through the month and through January. And so we're just going to hit the ground running in February because there are some exciting things coming up. The first thing that I want you to be aware of is that our um, registration for our missions conference is up and running. So we hope that you will uh, go ahead and register for that today. Uh, we have three tracks. First, there is the adult track, which is our normal uh, missions conference, what you would have formerly known as ME or missions extravaganza. And then this year new, we have a youth track and uh, our youth are actually gonna go out on a mission trip while the adults are, are at conference. And then your third track is your kids camp. And so kids camp this year is Saturday only. And we are going to do some really fun things. We're gonna have um, sensory boxes and we're gonna have um, a missions project and we're gonna do um, some, some more studying about Africa and do some hands-on um, activities from our missions in a box. So, uh, and we're gonna hear from some missionaries. So I'm really excited about this and I know you hear me say the word excited a lot, but we have a lot going on uh, with Missions Conference this year and we hope uh, that you will join us. Our speaker is Julie Bussler. She is the WMU president for WMU of Oklahoma, uh, but she is also a missionary, former missionary to Turkey. And she is the author of the book, Joyful Sorrow, which is a highlighted book of WMU this year, um, our, our, I guess our focus book. And uh, Julie tells the story of, um, of being a missionary in Turkey and having a, a mental breakdown. And as you know, our, or maybe you don't, so let me introduce it, our uh, WMU Project Help for the next uh, three years is going to be mental health, which we know is such a huge issue, uh, especially in America after the, the pandemic and, and COVID and all of the things that, that have happened. It really has sh shook uh, or shaken our uh, national um, mental health awareness. And so as a church, we want to be leaders in helping people find the hope and acceptance that they need. And so um, we want you to be a part of hearing Julie. Um, I'm posting some resources on our Mission Shakeup page, um, and you will see a couple of them here um, from, from Julie's uh, background and um, just a little bit more information about her. Um, and it's just such a story of hope that she shares, and it's going to just truly inspire you, I am sure. So I hope that you will join us for that. Um, it would be a great idea if you as a WMU uh, read this book together and, and maybe afterwards had uh, Julie sign your books because it is well worth the read. Also, I want to remind you that as uh, it being our project help, uh, mental health, um, there are resources available online through WMU National. Um, those resources are available on the Compassion Ministries pages. So just like you would have gone um, in years past to get training on human trafficking or refugees, uh, there is a project help training, um, which is, I think is an hour, about an hour long um, through WMU National. and um, and then you have all of those resources available that come with that training, such as your PowerPoints, where you so you can go ahead and, and train your group um, and, and help your church to be more aware of, of uh, the ways that we can partner in ministry and serve those with m mental health disorders. Um, also, there is an hour-long training that is uh, done periodically through WMU National, um, and this is a very, very in-depth training. So if you really want to be more of um, uh, not a, well, an expert, I would say, um, as far as having been trained in, um, in mental health disorders, uh, at least uh, in what WMU has to offer. Um, that class, it's a, it's a day-long class, I believe. Um, it's offered periodically. I've signed up to take the one in May. Um, so I hope that you will join me in that too. Um, and really, that would help if more, if more churches had uh, women trained in this, uh, we would all be able to be advocates. So um, I hope that you will do that. 
Another thing that we wanted to announce is that uh, tomorrow, on the 1st of February, our Children's Mission State um, registration is going to open up. That's going to be at Camp Kale um, in, uh, near Elizabeth City and Edenton. Um, that is such a neat uh, camp facility. It is located right on the Pamlico Sound. Um, and uh, we're going to be doing all around Africa again. Uh, Pastor Patrick Walratu from uh, Kenya is going to be joining us um, to be our, our keynote speaker. He will also uh, be joining us um, to lead our cultural exploration station uh, with his wife, Pauline. And so we are excited about that. We also want to remind you that February is uh, WMU Focus Month. Uh, this is the month that we say, pay special attention to our Heck Jones offering. Um, as you can see, I've got our poster here for it. Um, you can take this uh, Heck Jones offering up in in February, but you can also take it up all year long. But we have a special emphasis, a special push on this offering in February. This is the offering that goes to support all the missions and ministries of WMU of North Carolina. So um, that would be our military wives retreat, mom camp, prison retreat, um, all of the ministries that your um, consultants are involved in, um, it goes to pay for those. And so um, we want to encourage you. Um, we, we are a very innovative state. We have things going on all the time um, that many other states um, are, are learning from and drawing from us. Um, we are pioneers in ministry in many ways for WMU. And uh, we need your support, ladies. So don't forget this month, if you need a speaker, give us a call. We have a speaker team and someone will come and talk to your church about the mission and ministries of WMU. Give me a call. I'll come and talk to, talk to your church. Um, I'm happy to do that. We are all very happy to share during this time and in the months ahead. So um, if you ever have a, a Baptist Women's Sunday, give us a call. Um, we would love to share um, about um, being Baptist women on mission through WMU. We also want you to know that your um, Annie Armstrong offering materials are on their way. So if you haven't gotten them yet, don't freak out. Uh, they have been mailed or they are being mailed and they will be to all of the churches by March the 1st. So everything will be to you in time for your offering. Um, I wanted to let you know also when it comes to some things like your DVD, if you wanted to start your, your videos before you have your offering materials, those are available online at North American uh, Mission Board. And you go to Annie Armstrong and then resources, and they have the, the resources for the week of prayer. Uh, they have several missions, missionary um, testimonies. Um, all of that is available right there. And some of your IT people or your or your tech tech gurus uh, for your church would prefer to have a link to follow uh, than a DVD because many, many computers don't have DVD players anymore. So um, if you ordered a DVD, it is on its way. But if you wanted to go ahead and start showing those videos, that is online at North American Mission Board. The last thing that I wanted to let you know about is that our very own Amanda Martinson is going to be hosting a leadership cohort for the year. Um, and this is going to be all about um, young women learning to be leaders in their church, not just in WMU, um, but as leaders in general. And so uh, they will be meeting monthly and Amanda will be guiding them through that process of, of I guess, certification. Uh, Amanda has finished her uh, life coaching uh, certificate. And so she is going to be using that and, and some leadership um, knowledge that she has built over these many years of, of hosting our leadership luncheons. And um, it's going to be a really wonderful time. So um, registration for that is going to open in about two weeks, I believe. And we'll keep you posted. So keep looking on our Facebook page. I think there's going to be uh, spots for 15 women. So if you want to, uh, to get in, in on that, you need to do it early. I almost forgot, I wanted you to be aware that in your missions mosaic, um, just like we did with human trafficking and refugees, in your mo missions mosaic every month, there is going to be an article related to our Project Help um, 
focus. And so um, this month, our Project Health focus is on eating disorders. And let me tell you, ladies, that is a big thing amongst women. And I can tell you, especially amongst young uh, girls and teenagers, it is a huge issue. You are pro you could probably think of one woman off the top of your head who had a, an eating a disorder um, growing up or, or, or even right now. I can think of uh, one from high school that I sat next to in high school and, and others that I know personally right now who struggle with that. And um, so I just wanted you to take some time. I think that is on page 16, if I'm not mistaken there's the information about um, eating disorders. So let's be aware of that. So jumping right into our missions lesson, uh, we are talking about East Asia and the Fintons uh, this month. And this is a story about being in the waiting place. And I'm sure as just like some of you have been in the waiting place with your WMUs, many of you have told us that you're getting started back this year um, because you were trying to, to uh, care for for the least of these in your group and, and try not to spread COVID. Um, but we are coming out of our caves, I think, and uh, more and more so all of the time. And so um, many of you know what it's like to be in the waiting place. And COVID created um, that situation for Sarah and John Fenton in East Asia. Um, they were uh, basically uh, sent home or sent uh, out, ejected from the country that they were serving in. Um, they don't say specifically, they say East Asia. Um, we know that, um, that that happened to missionaries in China for sure. And there's a few other clues that would make us think that maybe that they were in China, um, such as if you look um, in your lesson, uh, they have a recipe for... Uh, Szechuan fried green beans, and um, Szechuan is a province in China, so that's kind of one of those clues there that might lead us to, to know that maybe they were in China. Um, they said that they spent um, a, a year living out of out of suitcases, kind of wondering uh, where they were gonna where they were gonna land, where where God was gonna send them. And one of the things that Sarah mentioned is that um, while she was home at her parents' house, she noticed that there was a tree that had fallen over a a pear tree, and uh, she said it kind of felt like a a metaphor for her life um, that that this tree had fallen over, but what she noticed was that it was still bearing fruit and that she knew that God wasn't finished with her and, and her family's mission yet. And I hope that that uh, feels the same for you, um, that many of us have gotten knocked down. Some of our groups have, um, have, have had to come back together and reform and there's been challenges in that. And maybe you feel knocked down, but God is not through with you and you can still bear fruit for missions. Um, just a couple of uh, fives, I guess, give me fives, five senses. Um, there is, you could um, show them uh, videos of a Buddhist temple um, because they're, those are available on YouTube. And, and that's one of the things that it said that, um, that the East Asia Pacific Rim area is, is the home to many Buddhists and, uh, and Muslims. Um, maybe show them the videos of it so that they can see that that it is a very highly liturgical uh, process that they go through um, read that page uh, page 20 and it tells you all about um, east asia and the pacific rim um, so many great details about that also they have that recipe for sichuan uh, dry dry fried green beans i am sure that is delicious but you know me, I like to make things as easy as possible. So um, another recipe might be Szechuan chicken. And that's a recipe you don't have to make. I'm going to, well, here's how you make that recipe. You go to your local Chinese restaurant and you order Kung Pao chicken. That is the same thing as Szechuan chicken. You could even split the pieces of chicken apart and have them on toothpicks and let your ladies taste it that way. So there's your taste. So you've got uh, something to see because the video is not up on National's uh, website yet. Um, there's something to smell. Let's see, what could our smell be? It could be the Szechuan chicken. Um, it could be 
uh, the green beans if you want to make that. You could also go to the Dollar Tree. They have incense there um, and, and put some incense in a Ziploc bag and let the ladies who want to smell it kind of have that smell so they kind of kind of immerse themselves. What, what would it be like to be in, in the country that they were in um, and uh, to be around, surrounded by Buddhist temples? So there would have been the smell, smell of incense. Um, think about what something else to see is to be aware of your surroundings. So if you're going to get your nails done um, or your eyebrows waxed, ladies, we know, um, then maybe check out and look at, at look at your nail salon and see if they have a, a, a Buddhist shrine. Often they'll have a gold Buddha and some fruit sitting there and some incense. So um, if you if you spot one, uh, remember to pray for the people who are who worship Buddha um, as you drive by them every day or uh, on a regular basis. Say a prayer for for the lost who who worship um, a God that is not real. Uh, something so we've got something to taste, something to smell, uh, something several things to see, uh, something to touch. If you have not done a lesson on East Asia yet or on a, a country that uses chopsticks, I'm going to recommend doing noodle races again. As some of you might say, uh, look, we are too old to be having races. But let me tell you something. You are never too old to have fun. And so this is something that is so fun. There was a 92-year-old woman in my bound training who loved having the noodle uh, relay race. And all in the world it is, is you get some chopsticks, some ramen noodles, you split your group up into two, and you walk quickly. You don't even have to run. Nobody has to run. Uh, try to pick up a noodle with your chopsticks and walk it back to your group. And that is all in the world it is, but I'm telling you, they will have so much fun. It is so funny uh, to, to see one another doing this and to cheer one another on. And we know that it's, this is, this is uh, basketball season and we love to, to cheer on our favorite teams. So your ladies will get into it, I promise you. So you've got something to, to smell, taste, touch, even hear in your videos about, uh, about Buddhist temples. Maybe you want to play some, some music from East Asia. Um, those are also available uh, through uh, Apple iTunes or through, um, or through YouTube. So I just want to encourage you, think of those ways to make it more immersive. Another thing that I wanted to let you know about is what, is, what could be your mission project for this month? I want to share with you a mission project that we have done for many years at my church, and that is um, sending cards to, uh, Valentine cards to Meals on Wheels um, uh, clients. And so every year, um, I have two different children's groups that I meet with, and uh, we make about 90 cards for our, our county uh, for Meals on Wheels. And um, in fact, one of the ladies who delivers the Meals on Wheels um, meals said that one of the um, one of the clients was so um, moved by the card that a child that the child had made for them because they they made it from start to finish that they framed that card um, because it meant so much to them. Now you don't have to frank, you don't have to make a card, but you can buy some Valentine cards and, and have your group sign them and um, send those to your Mills on Wheels participants. Also, um, if you look on uh, National's website um, right now, the pro there is a Project Help uh, carrying bag project that the children are being encouraged to do for their badge, um, which is to make a, a bag of, for, for kids in crisis. Um, that has coloring things, maybe a, a small fidget toy, um, and there's there's a whole list of things. But you know, you could help the kids do that. You, this could be a project that you do together, um, and what a wonderful blessing that could be to a child in crisis. Um, we delivered ours to um, the emergency room uh, waiting room, and they had suggestions for other places for you to send those to. So I'm going to have the information about that as well up on our website. So I hope that you will uh, take some time this, this month to, um, to plan for that mission project, to plan to, to 
either uh, do a bag or to do the Valentine cards, um, that you'll be looking around for those uh, altars, all around, little altars everywhere, um, and praying for the lost. You know, we, we live in a world of over 250 plus million uh, lost. And um, and our and our heart should break for that. And so every month, as we are praying for our missionaries, uh, don't forget that there are so many lost and so few missionaries. And uh, just just say extra prayers that our missionaries might be um, extra effective in what they do, and that the next generation of believers uh, would have hearts moved to share the gospel. That's all I have for you this month. I hope you have a great February and a happy Valentine's Day, and I will see you next month.